Well, hey, Chris. Good day, Tim. Are you ready to do this today? I know you think we should wait longer. Well, if we wait a little bit longer, I could get you so many more no, things. No, 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 trust me. I think the world needs to hear about this today. Well, if you say so, then today is the day. So, everyone, welcome. I am so excited to get to share what we've been building at Modular. We've been working on this for over a year now, and we hope that many people find this to be exciting. That's right, Chris. In fact, most people feel lucky to have been involved with just one advancement in compute. It's incredible to reflect how our team has been involved with so many. Well, it's been quite a journey. Uh, for me, it started when we launched LLVM over 20 years ago. And it's amazing how it's grown to a huge global community. LLVM now powers almost every piece of silicon on the planet, including all the mobile phones, massive internet infrastructure, and roughly everything in AI. We also contributed to Swift, a programming language that grew quickly. It's now used by millions of programmers. From that, we learned about the power of beautiful design and how a passionate developer community can unlock innovation. We've also been fortunate to be part of massive new technology shifts, like the rise of AI and the software that helped power it in both TensorFlow and PyTorch. And we've also contributed some really influential hardware and software technologies, like TPUs and the MLIR compiler. MLIR now powers a huge number of AI systems. Now we are pulling together the world's best people to rebuild AI software. AI is critical to the future of humanity and a technology that is as fundamentally important as the microprocessor, the mobile phone, and the internet itself. But it still faces so many challenges. As an industry, we have a choice to make. Do we want the power of AI to be in the hands of a few, locked behind an API? Or do we want it to be accessible to all of the world? At Modular, we take the stance that the world needs fair and equitable access to AI. And today, you'll hear how we are going to supercharge how it gets developed and distributed. And let's just face it, while AI is now obvious to the entire world, the software infrastructure that powers it is broken, it's fragmented, it's too expensive, and overall, it's just holding the world back. And to be clear, we are not making this claim. The world's AI developers are. For example, while Python is a beautiful language, it does struggle to scale beyond research into production sometimes. And developers are juggling a fragmented mess of technologies and frameworks that drive AI workloads to production. Many want to gatekeep AI by claiming that you need some insane amount of compute to be able to do it right. And of course, if you do manage to scale AI workloads, the cost of compute is eye-watering. We just need less complexity in the AI ecosystem. We need fewer things that work better. We need a simpler way to build and deploy AI in real-world applications. And today we're excited to share how we are revolutionizing AI research and innovation, as well as enabling that to scale into production where it can truly impact developers, their products, and ultimately our lives. That's right. We're here to announce two incredible new technological breakthroughs that will change the way you think about AI and compute all together. The first is the world's fastest unified AI execution engine that can power all of your TensorFlow and PyTorch workloads faster than ever before. And we'll unpack this more later but the key here is fully unified. This engine works across multiple frameworks and hardware with the goal of defragmenting the industry, ultimately to simplify your life. We provide a drop-in replacement. You get to enjoy significant performance and usability benefits without having to rewrite your TensorFlow or PyTorch models. We are way faster out of the box, even with standard Float32, and we aren't using any tricks by quantizing your models behind your back, even though we support quantization natively. We don't need massive model-specific hacks like people are doing today for transformers. We just work out of the box, and we work incredibly fast. We are starting with inference, and training will come later this year. Now, what about cost savings, you ask? Performance is important for latency and throughput, but it also directly impacts your cost. With Modular, you'll realize massive cost savings out of the box, and we'll show you how much later on. Now, all this will just help you move faster 
and realize more value from AI than ever before. And make your AI deployment and development workflows simpler. Now you might be wondering, how do we deliver such improvements? That comes to our second breakthrough. It's a new technology that powers the engine. It's a new programming language. And it blasts past the limitations of Python to make it faster than C++ and delivers safety by incorporating the best features of Rust. We go beyond both of these to unlock highly parallel accelerators as well as classic CPUs. We took Python and built on top of it and its ecosystem of libraries. We made a new language that's fast because it's parallel and takes advantage of vectors and the hardware on your processors. It's scalable because you can deploy it into production without any problems. And it's accelerated. It runs on all kinds of fancy and exotic hardware. And we are calling it Mojo. Mojo gives Python magical powers, adding the missing features that force Python programmers to have to drop C and C++. And wow, is Mojo fast. 35,000 times faster than Python today, giving you unparalleled performance as one of the fastest languages in the world and combining that with incredible Python-like usability that you are familiar with. But Mojo isn't just about speed. Its real magic is its ability to unify things. Take a look at some simple NumPy code. Python is great when you're building the high-level code that uses NumPy, but think about the poor developers that have to implement NumPy. They have to write things in C and C++. With Mojo, you can scale down to implement these high-performance libraries like NumPy all in the same language and with one set of tools. Here we're using a simple PMAP method to utilize multiple cores. But Mojo doesn't stop there. With Mojo, you can go all the way down to the metal and implement low-level numeric algorithms without any overhead. Mojo adds modern language features to Python in a beautiful way. For example, it adds static metaprogramming features that allow you to extend the language in libraries. It includes ownership and lifetimes like Rust does, but with a different approach that's much easier to learn. And it enables your AI workloads to be portable across an enormous range of hardware, from CPUs to GPUs, and even novel, new architectures. That's two revolutionary new breakthroughs, the fastest AI execution engine on the planet, and a new, highly scalable programming language with a simple and familiar syntax. And all this is just the beginning. We want the world to build more, innovate faster, and have a simpler AI ecosystem. We want you to have fantastic usability, full program portability and extensibility, compatibility with so many ecosystem tools and hardware, and of course, outstanding customer support. You will be so much better off building on our platform with a unified set of technologies that will enable you to develop and deploy faster and be more responsive to the incredible pace at which AI is evolving. Modular will totally change the way you develop AI applications and enable you to invent the future faster. All this on our next generation AI developer platform. Now let's have a look at how we are helping different workflows across the AI industry. Well, so I'm excited to dive deeper. Today we'll be talking about four different topics. Model deployment, large-scale models, hardware portability, and bringing programmability back to AI. To get started, I'd like to introduce Roseanne, who will tell you about a major step forward in model deployment. Thanks, Chris. Here at Modular, we speak with a lot of engineers who are deploying AI workloads to production. We hear that this is way more challenging than it needs to be. For example, Teams that use multiple AI development frameworks, such as TensorFlow and PyTorch, have to maintain many independent pipelines to serve their models. And those teams that wish to deploy to different platforms, including across server and mobile, have to also leverage many platform-specific deployment libraries. Each of these with their own model format and limited set of supported models and features. As a result, these teams are spending countless hours managing a multitude of bespoke tools and applying the same optimizations over and over again. 
And while everyone wants to productionize larger models, latency requirements and the cost of running those models is prohibitive, mostly due to poor out-of-the-box performance in an existing development frameworks. Which is again why there are even more hyper-specialized deployment libraries just for deploying large models. Today, AI is being deployed everywhere from cloud platforms, to laptops, to mobile, and even IoT devices. And the result is too many point solutions, from cloud, to frameworks, to deployment libraries, and all of the different hardware devices. Together, they create a crazy complex and fragmented ecosystem where developers are constantly brute forcing everything together to meet their production needs. This is slowing down everyone's ability to innovate. The AI community desperately needs a better deployment solution. To address these problems, we built a modular inference engine, a powerful combination of state-of-the-art compiler and runtime technologies that unifies AI frameworks and devices. It is by design multi. Model, framework, device, and cloud, and works across any platform. By getting rid of a vast majority of your tool chains, it simplifies AI deployment by orders of magnitude, enabling you to rely on a single execution engine for supporting all of your workloads. Through a simple API, you get compatibility with all models trained using major frameworks, such as TensorFlow and PyTorch. And by all models, we mean all models. The engine supports all the operators available in the training frameworks, as well as custom kernels, dynamic shapes, control flow, and more. All you have to do is bring your model as is. No rewriting, no retraining, no conversions. You can immediately deploy it to any platform and hardware backend where your model needs to run. From cloud infrastructure to on-premises data centers to workstations and edge devices, the same binary just works everywhere. We will go more in depth on this topic later. The modular engine takes care of all dependency management for you. When you use our engine, you get consistency across tests, in production environments. It only installs what it needs in order to run a given model on your target hardware. All framework and hardware-specific dependencies are completely opaque to you when you are developing. And if your team is really at the forefront of AI innovation and pushing novel model architectures to production, you can easily extend its capabilities by adding your own custom operators using Mojo. Now, I know what you're thinking. With an engine that is general and easy to use, I'll certainly have to sacrifice performance, right? Here in Modular, we believe that that is a false trade-off. The Modular Inference Engine is highly performing. In fact, it's the fastest unified AI execution engine on the planet. And we don't make this claim lightly. It will run your TensorFlow and PyTorch workloads up to three times faster, tapping into unparalleled out-of-the-box latency and throughput. And if you already have quantized your models, you see even greater performance wins. To your business, this immediately translates into huge operational cost savings. Again, all you have to do is bring your model as is. No model rewriting, no model retraining, no separate conversion tools, no tricks. There is no other engine that will give you this level of usability, model coverage, and incredible performance like we do. You will get your models into production faster. And we're talking a matter of hours, not weeks or months. I'll now pass it over to Nick, who we'll demo the engine in action.
Thanks, Roseanne. I'm excited to show you how simple it is to get started with the modular inference engine. We have drop-in replacements for existing production systems. Plus, we provide easy-to-use APIs for deeper systems integrations. Our APIs today are provided for both Python and C++. This combination enables efficiency and high performance in production workloads today. The modular inference engine simplifies model deployment for you. Just one integration point in the engine handles all framework, hardware, and acceleration dependencies for you. I have a demo to show you how easy it is to start using the inference engine today. Inside this notebook, I'm going to load two models that are ready for production deployment. One TensorFlow model and something different in PyTorch. Additionally, this notebook is running on an Intel machine, specifically a C5 4x large instance on AWS. Now that I have both of these artifacts loaded, I'll use a couple of lines of code from the modular Python API to initialize and start automatically performing inference on these models. You can see from the output in the notebook, everything you'd expect from an inference engine. The output sizes, the shapes, types, they are all here. As I mentioned earlier, this notebook is running on an Intel machine in AWS. However, this notebook just works on other CPU types. The overlay notebooks here are running on Intel, AMD, and Graviton CPUs. The modular unified AI engine handles all the deployment complexities. Your models just work. It's great that these models just work, but let's take a look at the performance. Here are the performance numbers of the two models in our notebook. We are more than 2x faster than TensorFlow and PyTorch. This performance is generalizable across all CPU architectures, not just the latest Intel chipsets. All of this performance comes out of the box. No additional plugins, tools, or tricks. It just works. As I mentioned earlier, the modular inference engine is provided with drop-in compatibility to existing serving systems. And we support all the major serving frameworks out of the box. That means if you are using TensorFlow Serving or NVIDIA Triton, we have drop-in replacements for these workloads. I have another demo to show how performance comes as a drop-in replacement for these serving frameworks. This Jupyter Notebook sends requests to two Triton server instances. The first server instance is using the default TensorFlow backend for Triton. Let's click Run and start seeing real-time latency numbers for this model. Great. Now that we have some initial latency numbers, I'm going to simply switch gears and point the same RPC request at the modular Triton backend. As you can see from the graph below, the latency numbers are instantly dropping. This is an example of how the modular inference engine provides real drop-in replacement performance. This performance provides real cost savings for production pipelines today. And we are just getting started. Our performance numbers will only get better. To wrap it up, the modular inference engine will be available in preview mode soon, and we're super excited to share it with you. Now, I'll hand it over to Amit, who's going to talk about how we're taking large models into the future. Thank you, Nick. So far, we have shown you how we are making AI deployment easier for typical workloads. But deploying and serving AI at scale in production is much more challenging than just having the world's fastest inference engine. This is especially true as we move into the era of large models. These billions and even trillion parameter models deliver state-of-the-art performance, but serving them requires enormous amounts of compute that stresses or breaks existing infrastructure. In particular, we have heard the following from AI developers. Existing large model serving backends fail to generalize across model architectures. Simple variations require significant development effort, especially those that step outside of standard transformer architectures. And models are so big that loading times can become prohibitive to operational scale and efficiency. This can lead to sluggish server startup and scale out and negatively impacts your end user experience. 
Lastly, as we move to the large model paradigm, developers like you will be doing more fine-tuning and less developing of models from scratch. However, you will quickly realize that serving a fleet of fine-tuned customer-specific models can lead to poor resource utilization and higher than expected costs. The reason underlying these challenges is simple. AI frameworks were not designed for large model serving. These frameworks were really designed for training and even then to train small or medium-sized models. Serving large models was not a consideration when these frameworks were built. Existing serving solutions merely layer standard cloud technologies on top of uncooperative AI execution engines. This is why we are building the modular cloud serving platform, a next generation AI serving infrastructure. Let me illustrate how a large transformer model would be served using the power of Modular's fully integrated end-to-end -end AI compute stack. Our AI execution engine understands the model computation graph and automatically partitions it. The serving runtime then distributes execution across multiple machines. Now serving for each partition scales out horizontally to keep up with more models and traffic volume. And if only certain model layers are fine-tuned, the system understands it and batches common layers for lower memory usage and increased utilization for GPU hardware. Unlocking unparalleled scale and efficiency for the world's largest models in production. We are super excited to share much more how we are helping AI developers scale the largest models in the world. Stay tuned for incredibly exciting announcements coming later this year. Tatiana will now speak about how we are enabling AI developers to work more effectively across hardware platforms. Thanks, Amit. We are living through a time of unprecedented hardware growth. From powerful new features of CPUs and GPUs to the incredible performance of specialized accelerators, there is an ever-increasing variety of new hardware platforms and capabilities for AI compute. But taking advantage of these new capabilities is not easy. We've spoken to many software developers, and this is what we've heard. Deploying a model on new types of hardware requires significant model and application code changes. And moving a model trained on computer-rich server hardware to resource-constrained edge devices is incredibly hard. Even running deployment-ready models in the cloud is a challenge because cloud providers do not have enough GPUs available to satisfy everybody's compute needs. And far too often, specialized tools one has to use for each particular type of hardware make development so difficult that developers just give up. Now, you might ask, why is it so hard? Why does it have to be this way? Mostly because each hardware vendor created their own unique tools and converters that work best for their hardware, even CPUs or GPUs from different hardware companies come with different toolchains, each riddled with different bugs, error messages, and limitations. And each hardware platform comes with its own programming model that one has to master to get good performance and sometimes just to make the model work. This doesn't scale. The world needs a software solution that will allow application developers to take advantage of hardware innovation. A solution that is by design multi-model, framework, device, and cloud. And that solution is Modulus Unified Software Platform for AI Hardware. A platform that makes it easy for application developers to migrate their models to new hardware and helps hardware developers to translate their innovation into value add for application developers and end users. A single platform with a single set of tools and a single programming model. You can think of it like CUDA, but for everyone, 
unified AI software for all the hardware around the world. We have so much more to say about how the modular platform is helping to unify AI software and enabling the hardware industry to innovate faster. Please stay tuned. We can't wait to share more later this year. Now, I'll pass it over to Eric, who will explain how Modular is solving the problem of AI programmability. Thanks, Tatiana. So far, we've talked about how Modular is making it easier for you to deploy your AI workloads with unparalleled efficiency and scale even enabling you to seamlessly take advantage of the best hardware platform for your particular use case. But another very important area that existing AI systems really struggle with is extensibility and programmability. Today's infrastructure tends to work well on certain happy paths, but breaks with new innovations. The result is that the world's most cutting edge companies take multiple months to move research models to production as they are routinely forced to rewrite large portions of their models in more performant languages than Python, just to meet latency and cost targets. These companies end up having to hire expensive kernel engineers to write custom operations, only to end up locked into a single hardware platform. And even then, adding these new operations to their TensorFlow or PyTorch models is a usability nightmare. Now, having a code base that is subsequently split across multiple languages ends up impacting team collaboration and productivity. So why isn't this easier? Well, it all starts with Python, a beautiful and powerful high-level language complete with clean and simple syntax and an expansive ecosystem of libraries. But Python has some well-known challenges. It doesn't get you to the enormous scalability or performance demanded by the world's largest model workloads nor does it get you to edge devices like mobile phones and microcontrollers. And this creates a unique fragmentation issue for AI. Namely, it drives a wedge between the research and production code bases, because researchers and data scientists love writing models in Python, but production engineers want to deploy these models in high-performance, scalable languages. But there's an even bigger problem for the AI industry. Python's lack of performance combined with AI's need for compute has actually turned AI into a fragmented three-world problem. Let me show you a diagram of how modern AI frameworks like TensorFlow and PyTorch work. These frameworks have a thin Python API for model development, but under the hood, they're really C++ systems calling into hardware kernels like CUDA. This clearly divides model, system, and hardware code, and makes it difficult for engineers to work across these layers. But CUDA only supports one of many accelerators in the industry. There are TPUs, IPUs, MPUs, and so many more domain-specific hardware systems being developed every single day. So this isn't actually a three-world problem, it's a hardware ecosystem size problem. Now don't get us wrong, we love Python, but it relies on C++ and hardware libraries for the really heavy stuff. And that's where the limitations emerge. So what if I said we could do everything, model, system, and hardware code in one scalable language? This is why we built Mojo, a new programming language that extends Python to become even more magical. Mojo provides all the wonderful parts of Python that researchers love and adds the system's programming features that it's missing. And in creating Mojo, we've learned from the other languages we've built as well as taking inspiration from others in the industry. Now I'll pass it over to Chris, who will showcase just how powerful Mojo really is. Thanks, Eric. Our view is that Python is really great. It just relies so much on C and C++ because it's missing a few things that will help it scale down to low-level programming. Let's start with the basics. Both Python and Mojo let you add types to your program to catch errors faster. But Mojo is built on an entirely new compiler stack. This includes the MLIR compiler infrastructure. Because of this, it rewards your work adding type annotations with significantly better performance. Going further, Mojo lets you define zero-cost abstractions, including taking control of storage by inline allocating values into your structures and eliminating unneeded indirections. 
Of course, low-level systems don't have to be memory unsafe. So we adopt the best ideas from other existing systems, but we round off some of the rough edges that make them difficult to learn and use. Mojo also makes it easy to write algorithms that run against a wide range of different hardware by using metaprogramming to parameterize them. For example, this code works on systems with many different vector lengths. But modern systems are complicated. How do you know what the right size is to use? Mojo can help. It builds in powerful auto-tuning features to automatically select the best parameters for an algorithm for highly efficient execution on a given platform. This is super powerful when working with more complex situations, like memory tiling or advanced accelerators. Now, these are just highlights, and there's so much more to explore including full support for developer tooling. In addition to new features, Mojo moves Python beyond single-threaded performance. Mojo doesn't have a global interpreter lock like Python, so it can execute things efficiently in parallel and has full access to all of the features of your CPU. In fact, Mojo is 35,000 times faster than Python when running numeric algorithms like Mandelbrot because it can use the full features of your CPU and it doesn't impose additional overhead. Mojo is also quite interesting because of the MLIR compiler. Mojo is the only language built for the MLIR compiler, and Mojo unlocks its full power. MLIR is important because it enables you to have access to all of the world's hardware. This includes things like CPUs and GPUs and machine learning accelerators. And it means you have full access to their exotic features, like tensor cores and AMX instructions and all the weird numerics they keep adding. But going beyond that, you get access to even weirder things, things like FPGAs and quantum computers, and even allowing you to design custom silicon. Now, we think this could be a big deal in the use cases we can't even imagine today. Now, I know what you might be thinking. There's a huge difference between looking like Python and working like Python. And much of Python's value is in its ecosystem. Well, with Mojo, you get access to the full Python ecosystem, including all of its packages. That means you can use your favorite libraries, like NumPy and Pandas and Matplotlib, and more directly in Mojo. But you may be wondering, what does this mean for AI? And what about the modular stack in particular? Well, users can leverage Mojo to extend their models. You can add a pre- and post-processing operation. You can replace existing operations with your customized ones. Mojo enables you to customize the entire modular stack, adding kernel fusions, graph rewrites, shape functions, all without having to recompile the framework or write C++ code. We've unlocked incredible extensibility and brought programmability back to AI. But instead of telling you all this now, I'd love to introduce Jeremy Howard, who will show you how Mojo works in practice. Thanks, Chris. You know, I realized it's been 30 years since I first trained a neural network. And to be honest, I haven't been that satisfied with any of the languages that I've been able to use throughout that time. In fact, I complained to Chris about this when I first met him years ago. And Chris has been telling me ever since, don't worry, Jeremy, one day we are going to fix this. The thing that I really want to fix is to see a language where I can write performant, flexible, hardcore code, but it should also be concise, readable, understandable code. And I think that actually Chris and his team here have done it with this new language called Mojo. Mojo is actually a superset of Python, so I can use my Python code. Here, check this out. I'll show you what I mean. So here is a notebook, right? But this notebook is no normal notebook. This is a Mojo notebook. And by way of demonstration, because this is the most fundamental foundational algorithm in deep learning, we're going to look at matrix multiplication. Now, of course, Mojo's got its own. We don't need to write our own, but we're just showing you we can actually write our own high performance matrix multiplication. Let's start by comparing to Python. That's very easy to do because we can just type percent Python in a Mojo notebook and then it actually is going to run it on the C Python interpreter. So here's our basic matrix multiplication. Go across the rows and the columns, multiply together, add it up. Let's write a little matrix and a little benchmark and try it out. And oh dear, 0.005 gigaflops. That's not great. How do we speed it up? Well, actually, believe it or not, we just take that code. We copy and paste it into a new cell without the percent Python. And because Mojo is a superset of Python, this runs too. But this time it runs in Mojo, not in Python. And immediately we get an eight and a half times speed up. 
Now, there's a lot of performance left on the table here, and to go faster, we're going to want a nice, fast, compact matrix type. Of course, we can use the one that Mojo provides for us, but just to show you that we can, here we've implemented it from scratch. So we're actually creating a struct here, so this is nice, compact in memory, and it's got the normal things we're used to, like done to get item and done to set item, and stuff you don't expect to see in Python, like alloc and like SIMD. And as you can see, the whole thing fits in about a page of code, a screen of code. So that's our matrix. And so to use it, we take, copy and paste the code again, but this time just add a type annotation. These are matrices. And now it's a 300 times speed up. Suddenly things are looking pretty amazing. But there's a lot more we can do. We can look at doing, if our CPU supports it, say eight um, elements at a time using SIMD instructions. It's a bit of a mess to do that manually. There's quite a bit of code, but we can do it manually. And we get a 570 times speed up. But better still, we can just call vectorize. So just write a dot product operation, call vectorize, and it'll automatically handle it on SIMD for us with the same performance speed up. So that's going to be happening in the innermost loop. We're going to be using SIMD. And in the outermost loop, um, what if we just call parallelize? This is something we can do. And now suddenly the rows are going to be done on separate cores for a 2,000 times speed up. So we've only got four cores going on here, so it's not huge. If you've got more cores, it'll be much bigger. This is something you absolutely can't do with Python. You can do some very, very basic parallel processing with Python, but it's literally creating separate processes and having to move memory around, and it's pretty nasty. And there's all kinds of complexities around the global interpreter lock and so forth as well. This is how easy it is in Mojo. And so suddenly we've got a 2,000 times faster matrix multiplication written from scratch. We can also make sure that we're using the cache really effectively by doing tiling, so doing a few bits of memory that's close to each other at a time and reusing them. Tiling is as easy as creating this little tiling function and then calling it to tile our function. So now we've got something that is parallelized, tiled, and vectorized for a 2,170 times speed up over Python. We can also add unrolling um, for a 2200 times speed up. So vectorize unroll is already built into Mojo, so we don't even have to write that. Now, there's a lot of complexity here though, like what tile size do we use, how many processes, what SIMD size, all this mess to worry about. And each different person you deploy to is going to have different versions of these. They'll have different memory, they're going to have different uh, CPUs, and so forth. No worries. Look at what you can do. We can create an auto-tuned version by simply calling auto-tune. So if we want an auto-tuned tile size, we just say, hey Mojo, try these different tile sizes for us, figure out which one's the fastest, compile the fastest version for us, cache it for this individual computer, and then use that, parallelized, tiled, unrolled, vectorized, for a 4,164 times speed up. So this is pretty remarkable, right? Now, it's not just linear algebra stuff. We can do really iterative stuff like calculating Mandelbrot. So we could create our own complex number type and it's going to be a struct. So again, it's going to be compact in memory. It looks like absolutely standard Python, as you can see, multiplying, subtracting, using the operations. And to create the Mandelbrot kernel, we just take the classic Mandelbrot set um, equation, iterative equation, and um, pop it in Python here. And then we can call it a bunch of times in a loop, um, uh, returning at the appropriate time to compute the Mandelbrot set. That's all very well and good. Did it work? Well, it'd be nice to look at it. So how would you look at it? Well, it'd be nice to use matplotlib. Oh, no worries. Every single Python library works in Mojo. And you can import it. Check this out. Plot is import the Python module matplotlib. NP is import the module numpy. And the rest of it, this is actually Mojo code, but it's also Python code. And it works. And I don't know if you remember, but Chris actually said the Mandelbrot set is 35,000 times faster than Python. And that's because we can also do an even faster version where we're handling it with SIMD. And we can actually create the kind of iterative algorithm that you just can't do in Python, even with the help of stuff like NumPy. This is something which is really unique to Mojo. So we now have something here which is incredibly flexible 
incredibly fast, can utilise the hardware you have no matter what it is, and is really understandable to Python programmers like you and me. I think finally we're at a point where we are going to have something where I actually enjoy writing neural networks. Wow, how awesome was that? Now this is just the start of the Mojo journey. At the hardware level, it's already great today. In fact, we've written all the hardware kernels in the modular engine using Mojo. And we've already spoken about how incredibly fast those are across multiple hardware platforms. But our plans for Mojo run so much deeper than this. Over time, we expect Mojo to become a full superset of Python. We've learned a lot from big language transitions in the past, and we don't want to replicate the painful transition from Python 2 to Python 3. Mojo is no small effort. This is a big project that will take time to complete. We're at the start of that journey, not the end, but we're happy to announce that we will be releasing a preview of Mojo. Please visit modular.com now to sign up and gain access. Now, I'll throw it back to, over to Chris and Tim to wrap things up. Hey Tim, how are you feeling? We made it. I'm so excited and pumped. Today was amazing. How about you? I'm super excited to share what we've been working on with the world. And as you know, Tim, that's just the beginning. Today we announced two major breakthroughs. First is the fastest unified AI engine on the planet. And we also have a new programming language that gives Python superpowers to help unify the compute industry. But Chris, I bet many people are wondering whether this will be open source. Uh, yes, we want to contribute a lot to open source. But we also want to do it the right way. After decades of experience building open source projects and communities, I've learned the most important thing is to build an inclusive and vibrant community. And that takes a lot of work. We still need to figure this out, so let's talk about it on our Discord channel. And all this is part of our goal. Modular is invested in building a better future for AI and the world. We imagine a future that is more innovative, simpler, and more unified for AI developers globally. We want the current and next generation of AI applications to scale more easily on the modular platform. In our world, AI developers and teams can realize more value from the AI they're building. They can build even more interesting products impact the world. And they can do so in ways that we can't even comprehend and move faster when doing it. And this is just the very beginning. Modular has so many more exciting innovations to announce in the months ahead. Thank you so much for joining us. We want to share a heartfelt thank you to everyone who has supported us up to this launch today. We hope Modular brings together AI developers everywhere who can use our platform to invent the future of AI faster. We are tool builders, and we believe our tools and infrastructure will help you build and create a better world for all with AI. Join the revolution and visit modular.com right now. Let's change the world together.